We finally pieced him together. I almost feel like I should be in a Frankenstein movie. Life! Give my creation! Life! Well, that didn't work. Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and to conclude our Legacy Month, we are going to take a look at Menasaur. Menasaur is of course the combined form of the Stunticons, and in order to build him you will need these five figures. You will need Breakdown, Dead End, Wild Rider, and drag strip. All four of these guys are the deluxe class figures, and you'll need the commander class figure, Motormaster. Now, of course, to do the transforming, it's a pretty simple setup. For starters, all four of the deluxe class figures will need to be in their car modes. And it would be preferable that they not have any of their accessories. I don't think the spoiler on Breakdown will get in the way, but for our purposes, we've left it off. Motormaster here will need to be in his robot mode. Then that just leaves us with the trailer. Let's get these guys out of the way. <laughs> Alright, for the trailer itself, it will need to be broken down into its component pieces. We will only be needing certain parts of it. For starters, we'll remove the front section. The sword we will eventually need, so we'll set it aside. And then, of course, we've got to separate this part from the front. This black piece we will need for Metasaur. The remaining part we won't, but it will have a use later, so we'll set it aside for the moment. Then we take the rear portion, separate it from the top and the bottom. Bottom portion contains the fists, so we will need that to build his arms, so just pull those apart. And then, of course, we will also need the top section. Because the top section in here has the feet, so we will need this to build the legs. And it just leaves us with this portion. That becomes the gun. We may or may not need this, depending on how you want to display your Menasaur. We'll explain that a little later in the video. But our next focus will be on Motormaster himself. Okay, to get Motormaster ready to form the torso of Menasaur, we start by turning him around to his backside. So we're going to open these little panels up, and we're going to fold his hands inside his arms, and then close them back up. Rather simple procedure. And then we come around here, we're going to take the back piece with the wheels, I'm going to fold that around like so and then fold the wheel section up and lock it into place. Now take his arms at the shoulder because you're going to pop the white portion free and bring his arms up to the sides like this. Then you're going to shift them so they point straight at us. Then rotate the arms at the uh, at the bicep joint so that this post here is pointing downwards. Just like that. 
Then you would bend his arms at the elbow so that they will point downwards. And then we are going to separate the shoulders, the black pieces for the shoulder, and fold the arms so they go in front. And they should also attach to the wheels like that. Now once we got them securely holding on to the wheels, turn Motormaster around and you're going to move his head and back down. You'll see inside there's another head. So we will then wiggle this second head out and up like so. Once that's up you can fold Motormaster's head onto his back piece and then put it inside. And then you can use Menasaur's head to help secure that in place. Once Menasaur's head is secured, reach back behind the head and you will be able to fold up the antenna. The antenna is done as one solid piece, so use both two fingers to help move it. That way you won't warp them. And now we'll come down here to his legs. You are going to open up these hinge pieces down here like so. Once those are opened up, turn him at his waist so now the truck pieces are facing you. Keep that secured there for the moment. Once that's done, you'll turn the legs at the thigh so that the feet will now face each other. Then you'll start to spread his legs and fold them in at the knees like so. Just gotta get the knees to separate on the inside. Sometimes they can be a little sticky. Once they're folded in like that, we can close these panels off. Then, of course, once that's done, fold the legs up and attach them to the side of the body. So there is a nice little post right here. And it should line up with this hole along the side of the chest. So just line it up and snap it into place. Of course, once those are in place, you'll take the pieces that were Motormaster's knees, which are the top of the truck, and fold them back underneath like so and get them reattached. May take a little effort, there we go. Just to get them to snap into place. Come on. I get this last one to do it, there we go. Now of course, once that's been done, you come up here to the little front end of the semi at the shoulders. You're going to pop that free and just fold it down and secure it. This gets most of the upper body ready. To finish it, however, we will need this piece. All right, to get this part ready, you'll take these two protrusions here at the top. And you're just going to ratchet them straight out. Once they are out, take the piece here that has the Decepticon symbol and you will rotate it so it goes like that. Then you can come down here to this part 
and rotate it around. And then of course, now that that's done, you will take, well, take Motor Master. You'll see inside this piece, there's a couple of large holes and a slot in the middle. And they should line up with these two round posts and this small post on the chest. So line it up and get him in. Once he's in there good and tight, fold this little purple piece up and it will help lock Motormaster in this mode. Of course, once you've done that, you can take these gray parts at the top of the chest and fold those up so they kind of hide the wheels a little bit. And there we go. That builds up Motormaster into Menasaur's torso. Alright, next part we're going to build are the legs. So you will need these two top pieces from the trailer. On the back side here you will find there's a section that pops free. You just pop that free, fold it around like so, then you can push down on the foot to release it, and bring it all out, and then you'll take this, this other piece Fold it up and lock it into place. Relatively simple procedure to do. And that gets the legs ready. Now the legs, just like the arms, are keyed for specific figures only. So the Generation 1 idea of being able to switch them around is long gone. So you'll need Wild Rider and Breakdown to be the legs. Thankfully they're pretty easy to get ready. All you have to do to get them readied is you have to shift their hood a bit so you can raise the windscreen up. Then, you'll separate the hood of the car and fold it up like that. Then you can fold the windscreen back down so it's less likely to break. Let's get breakdown ready here. Now, of course, to attach them, you'll be lining them up in here on the back side. so that that way they will press in. And as they push this purple piece here at the top, it will close those panels to complete the look of the legs. Now, of course, the legs are configured for a specific guy, because they have the posts here at the top and a couple of other posts down here at the bottom, and they will line up with... The rectangular ones at the bottom will line up down here with these on Breakdown's arms. And the round ones at the top will line up with the ones on the rear bumper of the car. So you just put it in and press him on. Just like that. Now, the way the instructions show, the post protruding out is kind of like the big toe. So that would make that on the left leg, and Wild Rider becomes the right leg. Even though, really, on these, I guess it doesn't matter, because the posts are about the same. Whoops, a little too high there, Wild Rider. And there we go. That gets the legs assembled. Alright, now to build the arms of Menasaur, you will need the lower portions of the trailer. 
What you'll do with them is you're going to take the side of the trailer and you will fold it down. Then you'll also fold up the sides of the trailer at its midpoint so it kind of folds up and condenses. And then you will fold down the section with the hand. This part forms the left hand since of where the thumb is. Let's get the other one to that point as well. Now, of course, this would be perfect if you wanted to leave them for attaching the robots like the Generation 1 era. But there are further folds in there that will break up the other two cars and, of course, give you some more articulation. But we need to attach the cars. Now, in this case, it is specific as to who goes where. Drag strip has to attach to the right arm. Because of the way these posts are all lined up. As you see, we got a couple of round ones here, and then there's a couple of straight ones here, and then two more down here. But there's also this important clip right here in the front. Because that will help detach the car so that you can get full articulation on the toy. Right, we got drag strip there and then dead end goes on to the other one. And I'll show you why it has to be specific. This drag strip had straight pins here underneath the circular ones. Dead ends are done at right angles. So you have to connect the right one. Now, once they are connected, like we said, you could leave them like that if you really want to do the G1 aesthetic, but really doesn't allow you much room to put the toy on. So, to continue the look, we got to separate it and shift things. Separate the piece here at the shoulder. Yes, it did take the car apart. It's built to do this. If you follow the instructions perfectly, you will not break the toy. Once it's done that, then you can fold this section downwards like so. Then you can also fold it down here and fold this section back like so as well. And then, of course, fold in the trailer wheels. And with this, we will have access to his elbows. Do the same thing here with drag strip. This would have been unheard of back in the 80s. You were actually breaking your toy apart, putting him in the combiner mode. But hey, there we go. That gets the arms ready. Now to assemble the unit. Okay, you'll take uh, the torso piece and you got these two slots here at the bottom of the legs. They will slide in onto these white posts at the top of the legs. Just slide them in one leg at a time. See how he stands here. He's standing pretty good so I don't have to adjust the legs any at the hip. And then you'll take uh, the arms, you got this purple piece here, and it will slide right here onto the shoulder, just like that. And there you have it, my friends, Menasaur. And of course, Menasaur in the Generation 1 continuity was always a bit of a wild card for the Decepticons to use. And a lot of that boils down to the personalities of the Stunticons. Menace Motormaster is not the most inspirational leader. He is, as I've stated in all the videos done on him, an overglorified bully. Since he's near indestructible, he believes that he is superior and loves to demonstrate that to the other Stunticons that he lords over. 
He especially enjoys making fun of their respective mental health issues. So, when they are all combined here, this is the only time the others can get even with the Motormaster's antics. Since the brain of Menasaur, like all the other combiners, is that while it's somewhat capable of independent thought, it gets most of its decision-making power from the minds of all five component pieces. So each of them can offer an opinion, and then Menasaur can act upon what it believes is the best decision. However, since the Stunticons care little for each other as much as they care for their leader, they often end up squabbling just as much when they're in their combined form. Unlike Devastator, who has a backup program that sends him after anything that's not have a Decepticon symbol, Menasaur does not have that. So he ends up going around attacking anything in a blinding rage. So that makes Menasaur almost as dangerous to the Decepticons as he is to the Autobots. Now, of course, we got to arm our giant here. We can, of course, use the gun. All you have to do on the back side is fold away one of the posts, because he can't hold both. Not like this, at least. And then you would just plug that in into one of the hands there, just like that. And, of course, you also have the option for the sword. So you have that, too. And those do look nice. Well, let's look at something else that this one has. He has articulation. Menasaur's head can be turned from side to side. Unfortunately, it is not on a ball joint, so you can't make him look up and down. His arms are capable of rotating at the shoulder all the way. You can bend his arm at the elbow 90 degrees. And there is a swivel at the bicep. So, Menasaur here does have G.I. Joe battle grip. You can twist him here at his hips. He does have some dance moves going for him. We can spread the legs apart into a full splits. He does have a bit of a thigh cut here on the legs. You can raise the leg up at the hip 90 degrees. And you can bend him at the knee 90 degrees. So, this is definitely an impressive amount of articulation for him. Especially when you compare him to his Generation 1 counterpart from 1986. Since all we could do with those guys was rotate the arm at the shoulder. So we've come quite a ways. Now of course some of you may be going, hey Sparkster, that's enough fun there for me, but we're not done yet. Not quite yet. Remember I said earlier that we did have a use for this piece, and we do. You basically would fold it out flat and then build it up by getting it straightened. And it basically forms a tower. Well, we fold out both pieces of the handle for the gun, flip up this piece here, and we now have a freestanding weapon. that you have as an option to display Menasaur with. Now, the problem is, is how does he reach it? Since he cannot touch that very easily there. Now, that's because we put it together wrong. What we need to do is fold that totally flat, and then it attaches from there onto here. 
And then we just use the swivels on the bicep. And then Minasaur has his own freestanding weapon emplacement. I don't see much play value for this, but, well, it does give you another option to display him by. And since he's using the bottoms of it, you can still have him hold the sword and everything's good and he's got all the parts displayed. Save for the little guy's pieces, but, now well, we can't have everything, I, see, I guess. So now we get to my thoughts. What do I think of this version of Menasaur? I got to admit, folks, I do like it. It is a marvelous improvement over the Generation 1 version. And maybe a little bit better than some of the other modern versions. Because I do have a few of them. Because I do have one of the animated ones. And I do have the Combiner Wars version of Menasaur. I've not reviewed either of those yet. I hope to, but eh, you know how it is with scheduling things. But I do like how this one is an improvement. We do have quite a lot of articulation going for this figure, so it does make a nice display piece. You've got a wide variety of options on how you can pose him for display on a shelf. Now, of course, he does stand roughly about a foot tall, so he definitely would be able to stand up there and stare down a lot of your giant action figures. The only downsides to Menasaur has been making him readily available to people. Not a lot of the stores have had many of the component parts. I mean, I did buy Drag Strip and Wild Rider from the stores. Dead End and Breakdown I had to buy off of eBay because I couldn't find them anywhere. And while I did see Motormaster once in a store, mine was donated to the channel. Once again, a good shout out to Riley for sending me Motormaster. I know some people are going to be critical of the freestanding weapon emplacement, and I understand your thoughts on that. But at least when it's in the com when it's used with the combined form, it isn't as many pieces, and it does hold up together pretty well. All in all, this is a pretty good figure, and I do hope any of you that have wanted uh, the Stunticons in the Legacy line have had a chance to get them. If not, I would encourage you to try. It is definitely worth the effort. And he certainly doesn't look as boxy as his original counterpart. That's my look at the Legacy version of Menasaur. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And please do remember that if you like the content we feature here on this channel, please do remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now, coming up in March, we have seen that in the new Legacy Evolution line, they're going to bring in another combiner. We're going to get a new version of Volcanicus, the Dinobot combiner. Well, even though that one will be a core class figure, he still should be interesting to see. But I haven't reviewed the original Volcanicus. Well, thanks to a contribution by my brother, we do have access to the Power of the Primes versions of the Dinobots, and we're going to spend all of March taking a look at them and the original Volcanicus in preparation for the new one's release. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.